Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the city of Van Buren in Clearwater County. And I am really excited to tackle today's episode. Today, we are going to finally try to resolve this housing issue that we've had forever in Clearwater County. If we take a look, the most pressing need for our city is right here. We have a high demand for residential zoning. So this is something that in Clearwater County is happening because we added a whole bunch of these uh, office buildings for the state government. In this building alone, we're seeing that there's a need for almost 1,750 1, workers. That might sound outlandish to you, but I assure you that that is a reasonable number of workers for that building. What is not reasonable is the number of people living in Van Buren to support all of these uh, particular office, office spaces. So today we're gonna try to fix that. Um, but it, it, this is a problem that persists not just in Van Buren, but this is a problem that's all over the US right now. In fact, if you take a look at this chart, it shows housing starts. So that's homes that were actually started to be built. And what you'll notice is before the recession in 2008, we were building uh, and then the upwards of 2 million homes per year. And that's home, single family, duplex, triplex, fourplex, five plus units. They're broken down, but this is a, a combination of all of them. That is what was being built uh, uh, per year prior to the recession. And then 2006, everything fell off a cliff. And uh, by the time we hit the recession, we were well under what we would need to be at to actually meet the housing demand in the country, which is generally about 1.5 million housing units per year annually is what we need to produce to, to be at an equilibrium. So we have just crossed the threshold of equilibrium back in 2019 before the pandemic, and then things fell off a cliff again, and then we went right back up to where we were supposed to be. Now, so here's the thing. For 10 years, we were under building homes which means that we have a shortage that could only be addressed by overbuilding for a while. Supply and demand at its most basic level. So that same problem persists here in Clearwater County. And the result of this would be all of the existing housing stock in the, in the entire county would go up through the roof in value. And that is not something that we want. So we are gonna try to resolve that today. So we're gonna do this by doing a couple of things. When we look here, we've got a lot of gaps in our zoning. So some of this is because it's parks and we don't want to zone in the parks. That's not our goal. But part of this is we have a lot of zoning that just isn't necessary at this point in time. So we've got some commercial right here that is not filled in. We've got an office right here. Uh, we've got commercial all up and down this road here. Some of this is filled in. So some of this could likely remain, but some of it could be replaced. And at this point in time in the city's history, they would likely look at this and go, okay, well, we need to really rethink what we're doing here because this isn't working. The other thing that they would look at is some of these vacant parcels that don't have zoning. They would look at coming up with a rationale uh, for the proposed zoning on these. Now I'm looking at these thinking that some of these would be city owned parcels and the city is going to offer them up as part of an RFP process or a request for proposal looking for specific development uh, to occur on these sites. And in return, they would give the developer that parcel. So it's a it's a pretty big gift to the developer, but in return, they're getting exactly what they want on this site, which is dense, walkable uh, development with minimal parking because there's high quality transit in the area and everything is walkable uh, in, this, in this particular area. So no need to overbuild uh, parking. And there's already a city owned lot right here anyway. So no need to build additional parking. So that is what we're gonna do. We're also going to look over here and begin our first single family neighborhood within Van Buren. So we have a lot to do today. Let's jump right in. We're gonna start right about here. So we're gonna dezone all of these areas now that currently are vacant. And I'll dezone this because this is not actually commercial anyway. <laughs> so there we go. And right there as well. And then we have a vacant parcel here. So I will definitely dezone that. And we are going to start placing our own buildings. So I'm really excited to do this. We're going to use Find It. And one of the things that I haven't been doing is really using some of the advanced search functionality within Find It. So I want to start doing that. So we're going to go into our quick menu and turn on this option right here, which shows the number of existing instances of a particular asset. So this is very valuable because it shows me which assets I've used and which ones I haven't and the number of times that I've used them. I also want to turn on show search tabs, which will allow me to have multiple searches open. So there are a couple of things that I know are searches that I'm going to want to pull up mid rise. We're going to pop a new one of these search tabs open and we'll type in low rise. And again, we can see this search right here and we can click back and forth between the two. So this is gonna be super helpful for us. We're gonna go one step further. I really love the work that Smiles has done. So we're gonna come through here 
and I'm going to push the plus button and we're gonna turn this on asset creator. And now you can see all the different asset creators who I've, I've subscribed to assets from them. Now, one of the reasons I'm looking for smiles is I have 187 assets from smiles pulled in. So I have asset creator, this has to be selected, otherwise I get all the assets, but I've narrowed it down to smiles. I can come through here and continue to drill this down. Just the single family homes that I have from smiles, just the multifamily. And now I can go through all of these different search uh, options that I have and pull these together. So now I have my smiles tab, my low rise tab, and my mid rise tab. So this is gonna be very valuable for me as I go through and fill in this area. So. We're gonna add in some mid-rise development here, and I believe that some of these trees are actually, yeah, those shouldn't be there. <laughs> we'll get rid of that, and let's start plopping. So I wanna to gravitate towards things I haven't used uh, at first, if at all possible. And again, we wanna narrow this down so that we're only looking at our residential. And for low-rise, it looks like we're just looking at this right here, the high-rise buildings. So, and, and, and with these, I've only, I've only got a couple that are unused. So it looks like eight. So that said, let's go for this one first, shall we? So this is the middle building. And it looks like the middle that I used is taller. And I don't know that I don't necessarily want that. So we will get rid of that. And that looks much better in my estimation. That is much better. So now the numbers are wrong on here. If you hit this refresh button, it'll fix this and show you that you've actually used these. So that's something to keep in mind with these assets that you'll need to do that a bit. I have no problem reusing these a few times. You know, this is the sort of thing that I'd expect to see architecture ending up in more than one location. So we are gonna do that in a couple of spots. And I think that you should never have problems reusing assets, uh, particularly if they, if they just work well, why not reuse them a couple of times? And we'll even go with some of the higher density buildings. So that's the other unused one that we had. So they're kind of boring and they've got colorful backs. So that might be something that you want to keep in mind. Maybe you don't like the colorful back. Uh, we could go through here, change the color. Maybe you do like the colorful back. And let's say you want to have a real rich forest green to, to match uh, superior. Copy this. I'm going to paste this in here so we have the same color for the center. Yeah, I like that. Now it matches. Looks very, very good. So we've got a little bit of space back here. And I think we're going to add some parks. The one thing I really want to think about today is not crowding the buildings. It's something that's so easy to do. It's so easy to say, all right, well, I've got two tiles here and find some assets and just load these in. But here's the thing. There are things happening behind here. It looks like someone has a shopping cart <laughs> and we've also got a dumpster. So Rather than crowding this in, I think that we could have park space or trails or some sort of seating area. That to me is much more natural to have uh, some space in between these buildings. You're still framing the street wall right here on the sides and in the front where it matters the most, but we are not crowding behind it. So we're going to try to keep that in mind. Let's get back to adding some of these assets in here though. So we've got this modern mid-rise condo from Smiles. I don't know that we're going to use that just yet. I think we need a bigger parcel. Let's go to our low rise set here. And this one looks like it will be fairly easy to place as well. So this is end piece. And truthfully, I think I could probably just line up a whole bunch of these ends. Yeah, there we go. That looks perfectly, perfectly acceptable. We're gonna do the exact same thing in another location over here. Very nice. Now let's put in some lower rise apartments here. So th th this is a modular apartment set. And we had to use a little bit of eminent domain there, but look at how great this looks. I think the one thing is the spacing might be a little bit off. We can play with that. Hold down alt. We don't want to hold down alt. That makes it bad. <laughs> so we will we will go our own way. Play with Mac and do it right here. There we go. You know, and I could get super crazy with this, but I'm going to try to not. <laughs> what I am going to do, though, is there are some really uh, not great building, uh, not great uh, plantings back here. So we're going to change the trees that we have. And so let's take a look. And really, it's these uh, plain street tree large that we have that I don't think are, are very flattering in this area. They're not going to prevent the sound that you would see from a football field right here. So we would certainly want something evergreen, if, if at all possible. But if not, uh, you know, at least very, very leafy. OK, I think we're going to go with this hazel a uh, large bush. I'm not really finding a lot that's great in this location. That's still very tight up on the building, but at least it provides some protection from the sound and the lights that you have on game day. That said, 
This is a high school stadium. It's gonna be really disruptive on the days where there are football games, but those games are going to happen, what, eight times a year? And then you'll have some practices, but those practices might not even occur here. So I'm gonna try not to, to get overly crazy about that. We should also, while we're over here, I kind of have. So we're gonna add in some nice, this is actually the kind I was hoping to fit against the house here. So we're just gonna add more of these. So these are an evergreen, so all year you'd get that protection. Uh, so even if there were a night game in the winter, you're gonna you're gonna have some sound dampening and light dampening. So there we go. The other thing, the other concern here would be sometimes football stadiums like to leave their lights on at night. That would be un unacceptable. <laughs> with with this much residential around, we're not gonna allow that to happen. Okay, and I am I am liking that. So over here we've got a couple more blocks to fill in, and I'm noticing something as I'm over here. It looks like I forgot to finish the alleys. So we're gonna need to do something about that. I'm gonna also take care of that one over here. So let's steal an alleyway from over here. And then I think I can just pop through here and make our connections down. And it looks like I have pads in some locations where alleys should be. So we are gonna replace those. Pads are nice, but that is not functional. So the one thing I am gonna do is make sure that as I'm placing these, they are not hitting this arterial right here. So we're gonna turn off our road guidelines, but we are gonna have on our grid. So I can snap to that with my 1U road and come right through here. As I think about this, the other thing that we could do is call a mulligan on this one generally and have some housing fronting this road. It might not be the most desirable location, but it is in the downtown area with close proximity to lots and lots of desirable uses to be close to. So I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, some development occurring. There. All right, so we've got a couple more blocks here to fill in. So let's go back into our searches. They're all still open, which is absolutely wonderful. So I'm gonna pop in some low rises. We've used some of these before, but that doesn't mean that we can't use them again. Now this I've used a lot, this low rise middle. So I'm gonna try to avoid that. Now this is an interesting building because I really like it, but I think that the orientation of it uh, leads me to believe that this is the front. If we take a look, it seems like this is the pedestrian front. And then here we've got some pretty ugly sides and that would not fly. Like if, if I were reviewing this building and they presented this and they said the front of our building is on this local street uh, for the pedestrian access and we're gonna have this blank wall right here that looks like a prison wall facing our arterial, I would immediately go, no, nope, go back to the drawing board and that, that this wouldn't work. So we're not gonna do this one, not in this location, but we are gonna do something with that building in the future here. And here we don't actually have roads for the garages, but because they're spaced appropriately, it's basically all paved in between and you would be able to get your car through. So I'm gonna let this slide. I think it's a nice little setup here and they're all different colors. So we've got some variety and variation, which is also very nice. So just a couple more and then we're gonna come through and add in some landscaping. Okay, so now we've got this filled in and things are up, 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 up. I spoke too soon. We removed a building here as well. Let's get one more in here. This is a three by three, so we can certainly narrow this down fairly easily, three by three, and we do not have many options. <laughs> so we're looking at Smiles buildings and it looks like we can either get, oh, interesting. So this is a, cor not a corner, which is unfortunate. So this is, I'm wondering, uh, this is just one of our low rise corners and those are two. So that's the problem that we're having. We're just gonna, do something like this. So this, I actually kind of like this. You'll see this with some buildings where the new building wraps into the old one. So I'm wondering if I can make this look a little bit more natural. Maybe something like that. And honestly, that kind of makes these line up nicely. Yeah, yeah, I like that. That will work. That will work. Kind of funky back in the back. We'll just need to not check it out in the back. We'll only look at the front. <laughs> and. You're gonna, you're gonna have to forgive me for a little bit of imperfection here. So here, now that we've got all of these spaces, I wanna see if there's anything that we can do to liven this up. Now, I know that I've got some parks here. Uh, so this was a, a Discord suggestion to grab some of these small parks that can be placed anywhere. So we're gonna place a few of these. And I wish that they had 
thumbnails, but they do not. So but you, you can see what they are. Like this one says barbecue corner. So just in some of these empty spaces, we're able to raise our land value by adding in some amenities. So we can do the same thing on this side. And let's check these out. So if we look, it's just a little barbecue. It's got some terrible vanilla assets that we're gonna need to fix, but it livens it up a little bit. So let's check out who these assets are from. So these are by Be A Frog. So thank you, Be A Frog. These are excellent assets. Be A Frog, Be A Frog, and Van Karudin. <laughs> so lots of nice little assets. That's where the, the corner barbecue is from. So we're gonna come in here with Bob, so Alt B, and we can replace these trees. Now, just a little bit of Bob work, and you can see that this just feels a ton better. So we could also come through here and use Bob to remove things like the trash. I think that that looks pretty bad behind this building. And there we go. Since the city had the RFP, we can say that you've got to hide your trash receptacles. And now these doors provide access to a wonderful little park space, which to me is a much more valuable use of that land. And there we go. Just a little bit of nature right outside of these. And the nice thing is as I've gone through and fixed these, it's it's made improvements to the rest of them as well. So now we have a much better situation with uh, all of these apartments. And the other nice thing about this is that it's improving our land values. Now, this is a more challenging one. This particular asset has garages behind. So we are going to pull up some concrete. Nice thing is with our tabs now, we can pull up a new tab and pull up our concrete. Leave that tab open because we use this a lot. There we go. So this to me is really brought some life to this area. We've also got a couple of blocks here now that I think about it. This city park is only in this area. I'm going to reserve these though, because I think that we're going to want to do something a little bit more special. It's kind of unfortunate that there's a parking ramp right here. It's not surprising <laughs> that something like this would crop up in this location, but that doesn't make it any less unfortunate. That's <laughs> kind of a sad use. Now back here again, we've got another space. We could certainly back a use up to this road. I think there would be some controversy allowing access out to this road from here. We'd probably want to see that on this side. It, that We're going to deviate from reality a bit there because I can't dictate that in this game. But just know in reality, this entryway into this building is going to come from that alley. We're going to use our network privacy fence over here. And uh, that's another tab I have open. <laughs> so this is going to become a thing that I do now. And I like this idea because we can pull this through here. And it's facing in the wrong direction, which is frustrating. We could fix that easily enough. Not with TMPE. That's not going to work. Network multi-tool. We come in here. We look at the invert segment mode. And we can just highlight the segment, click it once and then it's facing the correct direction. Now, truthfully, the city, considering we have all of this ability to control what's happening here, probably require them to back that out and add a row of landscaping in front of this so that from the street, it's a little bit nicer to, a little bit more pleasant for the pedestrian environment right there. So uh, some sort of, of nicer landscaping. We'll just go with some white bushes here, which if you're like me, uh, is, is kind of a mixed blessing. I love flowers, but I'm allergic to bees. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, I would see this and I'd go, oh my goodness, <laughs> I'm going to die. <laughs> and then back here, we will add just a couple of, we'll add a couple of trees. We'll leave this open. We need some places in the city where you can throw a Frisbee. I know that I've been critiqued because of that. And I fully agree. I don't, I don't leave enough open space. So we should, we should um, ensure that we have some more. We should also give a barbecue back here. Why not? And this could be the barbecue that uh, the HOA pays for, for or the condo association pays for so just a little bit of detailing there and it makes it feel a ton better and now look at this we're starting to see this area fill in i love it i love it i love it but there's more that we need to do so this is a nice block it's perfectly uh perfectly laid out i think i can just zone this in and have some nice things pop in like right here if we take a look this is just zone commercial it could be better but it, it it's not that bad these, this is something that I could work with and improve. I'm hoping we have the same experience here with our residential. While that's filling in, let's get some more landscaping and place that over here. And there we go, just a little something to liven this area up. And it seems as though this zoned in mostly appropriately, 
I don't necessarily love what it's done here with this newish looking building, but at least it did cover up that, that area. And over time, this will improve and look a little bit better. So I'm, I'm okay with this one. Where I'm going to be a bit more selective is in this larger parcel here. And then this curve block looks absolutely horrendous. So we're gonna fix this one up as well and fill in just a couple more spots over here. And obviously there's demand, so it's just gonna keep filling in. Now again, we're gonna come back to Smiles and we're gonna get rid of all of our restrictions on what we had over here. And I'm gonna look for things that I haven't used. We'll refresh this again. Let's give this a shot. Okay, so this isn't quite perfect, but we can clean some of this up. This looks pretty good. No matter what angle, it looks pretty good. We've got this plaza area in the center. I don't know that we can really do much with this, but we can try to get creative. So what we're gonna do is add a park space in here, try to boost up land values. I think if we look at our land values in this area, they're pretty good, they're pretty good. I think they will be very good in the future, but we can make them great right now. So let's just add one of our prefab parks that we already have. Okay, so I've got a couple of parks that I can't really see because they don't have images. So I thought I'd grab a couple of these and take a look at them to see what might be really appropriate there. This park right here is actually pretty darn nice. Honestly, most of these are. This one, maybe not so much. Not appropriate for what we're looking for. Although, it's not bad. I don't love the pools because it's like four pool assets rammed together, but it's pretty vanilla, which is nice. We add that through here. Okay, so what I've done is I've grabbed our pedestrian roads and used those as a foundation, mainly to get rid of that little blinking sign that says it's not connected to the road, which will drive me crazy, because I hate that. And now I'm gonna also go through here and get rid of some of this gravel. It's just, it, 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 to me, it's, it's overkill. And then instead of gravel, I grabbed and made some messy cement to, uh, to, to cover this area up. I think it looks a little better. Uh, I, I hate how blobby it is, but you know, as well as I do, that this is what we have to work with. So <laughs> we're gonna work with what we have, which is sometimes a bit of zoom out, and boy, does that look good. <laughs> so there we go. And one more, one or two more blocks that I want to fill in some buildings. Now in this location, I think we can start to start thinking about density. Same thing over here. I think that we can start to think about some taller buildings. And I actually think that these buildings that we've been using work really well with this taller end piece. So why don't we flank the two ends of this with some taller end pieces. So we'll need it to do a lot of move it action through here. And maybe we have too many of these. We might need to spread things out and really finesse this. But I think the outcome is gonna be very, very good. Okay, so now the beautiful thing about this is that it feels like it's part of one plan development. Obviously, gotta move this over just a little bit. We'll scoot this back. There we go, that is good. And we could have some more park spaces right here. So I'm falling into the detailing trap. And one of the things I wanted to point out, because I think I wanted to do this before, was uh, demonstrate the linear fence fill. It can screw up sometimes when you'll have a gap here, but if it doesn't, what it allows you to do is come through and prop line tool when you're using line, and it will slide these into each other. So I think the problem is that I have the spacing too great in between these. And you see that I've dropped it down to three meters, and now, these will always come in a row. Now the nice thing about that is it allows you to make some custom shapes if you want uh, and, and come around a corner like this and really fit the space really nicely. All right, so I think that that makes that feel like a unique place where you might wanna stop and have a bite to eat. We also need to fill in some of these areas that we've neglected. And I don't think you need to get super crazy prescriptive about some of these. You can just kind of line some trees up through here and just make it feel a little less dangerous <laughs> if you were walking by it. Because that is what I would think. I'm walking by this and I just think, boy, boy this is uncomfortable. It's just the, the side of a building without any windows, no landscaping, nothing. Now, some people might look at this and say, you've added a whole bunch of trees. That's a place where someone could jump out at me. And to that, I, you know, maybe, <laughs> but, but I, I, I don't think that that's going to be as big of a concern as having that, that wall where it's just you and someone attack. So 
We're going to go with this. I think this is better. I think this is better. I'd like to hear what you have to say. This. Let me know in the comments. Better to have trees or better to leave it open and uh, try to keep some space. <laughs> All right. So back here again, we've got a couple of spaces to fill in. I'm going to leave some of this. We're going to do more in this area. We've made a significant change right here. And that's because I want to fill in a couple of blocks over here before we move on to our single family neighborhood. So here there's one in particular that I've been thinking about and we're gonna go for just our Rico. We're gonna come in with a SoCal mid-rise and I think that this is a very attractive building from all sides. So we can get away with using this one. Truthfully, this one would probably look good if we were backing this up, but we might do that. So I could take out a block here yeah, that's really nice. So we're going to get rid of a street. That happens from time to time where it gets broken up for the built environment. So we'll need an alleyway here. So maybe we'll need to give some consideration to the directionality of this. So we'll alt this around. I wanted to prevent there from being an alley that, that disrupted this street. It's, it's really unavoidable. So we're going to try to make this feel like it's one building and, and slide this over. And I want to see which block it makes the most sense. I'm concerned about the distance in between the junctions. And it looks like it's going to be equidistant no matter what. So I'm going to go with pulling the, the building this way because we have a, a stop right here at our tram. So that is likely now that this is moved is very unlikely to, to ever relocate. What we are going to do, we are going to grab this alleyway that we've used over here and I'll pull that up behind it and we won't intersect this road here, but we already have an alley right here, so we can turn on our angle. And I'm sure that some people are gonna hate this, but I could also just do this, upgrade this to be a parking lot road. And then we'll add a couple of EV charging spaces, some accessible spaces, and then some general purpose parking. Now we've got this space here and we could certainly add in some townhomes, but I do think it would be nice to have some green space here. And when we were looking at those, those strange little parks that we have so many of now, I saw one that was a longer park. So I think we're going to give that a shot. It was like eight, eight by two. So this is interesting. It is a narrow park path. And what we're going to do to make this feel better is we'll pull this in the middle here. And then we're going to change out the trees to something that we, we, we can mimic. So we'll come through here with Bob. And this is a beach low. I don't love that. We'll go and we'll look for something. Why don't we go with this silver maple street tree? That's not bad. And we now know exactly what to look for in here when we're looking for our trees. But that is nice. And we will also add in some landscaping along here as well to finish this off. Although <laughs> my parking is blocking the parking, which is kind of, there's something, there's something that feels ironic about that. Okay. There we go. There we go. So now you could drive in here. Yeah. It's very, very driving friendly. And I'm sure that there will be a lot of people who hate that. Unfortunately, this development is really kind of ubiquitous. And it's interesting. It looks like we have the same building right here. So it's not the first time that we've used it, but <laughs> we're using it. We're using it well both times. Uh, that's what that's what I'll say. All right, we are kind of packing them in here, but we're trying to get some density. And none of these have rear lots anyway, so I think that it works just fine. Gets us some quick and easy density. A little dirty, but it works. Sometimes you sometimes you got to accept a, a little bit of uh, a little bit of quick and dirty, a little bit of quick and dirty work, and that, that certainly is a description of it. And wow, this is starting to fill in now and feel like a city on the move, and I'm I'm really enjoying that. So I'm gonna look at some of these other blocks too. If there are locations where we can just fill in quickly with some high density because the blocks are well suited to it, I think that we should absolutely do that. Now in this location we have offices. It's not working, but I do think that we could grab some buildings from this side, move them in appropriately. <laughs> I didn't hold down shift or something. Here we go. I will alt, 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 place, place, and place. Not the most exciting thing that I'm doing here, but I am finishing some blocks quickly and 
getting the residential that we need to get the city to be successful. And ultimately in this location, I just think that that would be the overriding thing that we would be looking at, trying to find a way to make this area successful. Whoa, that is, that is not the way. <laughs> that was a very quick way to fill in these. And I feel like we're finally growing. The sad thing is we've added less than 2000 population. So I think that if, if I were working on this that and just trying to really grow my population, I could find this to be very discouraging, <laughs> you know, but I, I, I want to tell you, don't feel overly discouraged because we're going to get some quick density and uh, it's, it's going to make this, this place really feel much better. So in this area, I've had plans for a while as the city planner. And the plan has really been to start thinking about a university. So there's been some rumblings from some of the elected officials that we need a school that pr produces lawyers. So right now we have a tech school, but we really need a liberal arts college where people can get a liberal arts education and become lawyers and uh, other, other professionals that work in offices. Right now you're importing all of those workers. and That's not sustainable for the long term. So in this area, we have a grid and I would expect to see this grid to have been platted out for some area of time. And I think that a natural place for this to end would be at about this apartment line. So the big difference is that in the place, you know, in basically in the, in the, in the pre-existing platted area, there would be a grid that would be laid out and the grid would, would lay out both the local roads and the collectors and arterials, so the higher, higher density, uh, higher capacity roadways. In more contemporary developments, what you see is that collectors and arterials are laid out and the developers have a great de degree of freedom to lay out local roads, for better or for worse. In my opinion, most of the time it's for the worst. <laughs> but we're going to deal with that and live in that reality because that is reality. A lot of the local roads, unless your community is big into master planning, are likely planned by a developer. So we'll extend this road out. I wanted to make sure that was as straight as I could make it. And then right here, we've got another collector. And let's turn on all of our guidelines because we want to find a nice place where we can meet up here. And this is where our grid will end. So on this road, we're going to continue the grid, but it's going to be a perfect grid and there's going to be a reason for that. And we will get to that in just a moment. But first, I'm going to come through here and start to think about where we're going to lay out our university. So I think that what we need to do is really consider our university space first before we lay out the neighborhood. And there are a couple of things that I wanna think about, right? We have this road right here. I'm gonna turn off our road bending. And I think if we meet up with this road right here, we could have a really special connection. That's interesting. It feels like it's bending anyway. Maybe it's not. But we'll come through there. Yeah, that is really weird. That is really weird. All right, let's give that another shot. Maybe it's our road selection. Yeah, I think it, it must have just been that road because this one right here looks perfectly fine. So basically the reason that we're doing this is everything inside of here is going to be university. So we are going to lock this land away for that university right along the coast. Uh, so there will be some university housing along here. It will allow students to get to campus using uh, the train which is something that we've prioritized at our other campus as well. It will also give them beachfront property. So it's gonna be a potentially a, a bit of a party school. So that might, might play into some of the land use decisions that happen around here, the types of businesses that request to be located in this area. And uh, we're providing lots of space so that we could have uh, things such as sporting uh, event venues. We might need to dip into this more. But it's, this is a good starting point. So in this area, we're gonna plat out an older neighborhood. And I'm really excited to do this. So let's go through here. We're gonna use our big suburban roads and I wanna mimic what we have going on in the rest of the city. So if we look at over here at our grid, it is 14 by eight. So we're gonna come over here and do the exact same thing. So we'll come over 14. I'm gonna turn off road guidelines because that'll break my grid eventually. There we go. So we've got this little area laid out now. There are some places where maybe we would want to break up some of these blocks a little bit more, but I think this is for the most part pretty good. We're going to also extend this down this way a little ways. Now over here is where the grid's going to change. So I'm going to come down two more blocks here 
and we'll have some unplatted rounds in this area. We'll need to do something, uh, some sort of transition between what will be the old platted area and the new platted area. And that might be even changing the orientation or coming up with, with some sort of park, large park space. Why don't you let me know in the comments what you think should go here? I do think that there would be a public process to ask about some of these lands. Uh, and we're gonna jump over there, that's great. <laughs> this is what we'd end up with. So now we're gonna use a trick that uh, was recommended in the comments in the previous episode. So Jesse Fusco recommended that I add a hotkey for the random button when I'm plopping buildings. And I obviously knew nothing about what this meant. And that's why I said, I didn't know this was possible. We'll have to look it up. Well, it's not just that it's possible. It's easily inside of find it. Now there's been a video that there's been a video that Biffa put out uh, talking about this recently. Uh, it's the random selection. I didn't know that this was a thing that you could do. And uh, I'm really excited that Jesse pointed this out because it's gonna make this neighborhood having a theme really easy to put together. So this is something that I haven't done a lot of in the past, but we're gonna give it a shot now. So let's look at our low density buildings. And what you see is that Smiles has a number of excellent assets. So you see that there's historic American house. Uh, it's got a number of these. And I'm trying to see if any of these are a little weird that don't fit in. So why don't we just type in American? And it looks like they're all gonna be a part of that, which might be fine. So I've added a hotkey for the random button. So when you hit the random button, it's randomly selecting one of these homes and filtering it down for you. So if you go into your options and you go into find it and you go to the bottom, you can add a random selection hotkey. So I've used slash. The main reason for that is I use my arrow keys to pan around the map. I'm a weirdo. <laughs> so. That is gonna be really, really helpful for me. So I'm gonna come through and just place some of these down. And as I'm placing, click, hotkey, click, hotkey. And I can quickly go through these and change these up. And you end up with some really nice variation in your blocks. So one of the things that could be a challenge, you can see it right here, is that I'm getting different depths. We're gonna rectify that. We will we, we resolve that. In fact, I think maybe we need to think about that a little more up front. So why don't we go with our four U homes first? So we'll kind of clump these together. And I'm just randomizing these as I'm placing them. So what I'm thinking is it would make sense to have homes of a similar type uh, fronting one another. It would also make sense to have water pipes underneath our roads right where they belong so all of these buildings aren't chirping at me about how upset they are. So I think after we're done placing a few of these, we're gonna need to take care of that. All right, so let's get some water pipes. We're gonna place those underneath our roads right where they belong and whoa, whoa, I think the city planner was drunk when he did this. <laughs> so we're gonna need to, that should never have been approved ever, not in a million years, but it was. And now we have to go in and fix it, tear up the side of the road. Oh, not, not a good situation. The planner, the planner is regretful and hopefully not fired, but most likely. <laughs> and I know that water pipes aren't everyone's cup of tea, but I, I actually really enjoy placing them. I think it's something that is, is kind of cathartic and I enjoy the way the map looks after you do it. So we're going to place a whole bunch of these historic homes now and then we are going to use bob to get rid of some of those fall trees as much as oh we've got ferns in the front too i don't love that either there we go now what i want to do is come through and look for some two you homes and i think i have the perfect idea so we're to come through here and there's these midwestern homes that i think are going to fit really well And we just gotta, we gotta take a moment to admire what this feels like. So this to me feels super authentic. The homes have a bit of variety, gigantic trees growing in between them that are unacceptable and crazy. <laughs> but generally it just, it's a good feeling block. So let's go through and we'll use Bob to clean up some of these buildings so we can finish placing these down. And what we're gonna see is it's just a couple of these assets that have crazy tree things happening. Okay, I've gone through and I think I got most of the really large, oh, no. <laughs> and the funny thing is it looks like actually, the problem is 
this one block, the homes are just too big. We're gonna need to go back to the drawing board. So that's the problem with plopping, is you can sometimes end up in a situation where you just, you think that you've done something right, but you haven't, you're, you're, you're wrong. <laughs> so we'll fix this. So I think this is a good demonstration of the importance of counting the tiles. So I have three here. So whatever I do here, I need to have three max. I can have two, two depth, but no more. So this particular asset says that it's two, but it's actually three. So that's kind of an abnormality and an oddity. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of go through and replicate some of these blocks and paste a few of these around. Oh, we have a sinkhole about to appear. That's no good. I wonder where this sinkhole is going to happen. I'm really hoping it's nowhere that's that damaging, but we are about to find out. Oh, oh, we are. Oh, wow. All right. We're kind of in the middle of nowhere. So if we're going to have a sinkhole appear, this is a pretty good spot for it. So we're going to just accept that and be happy because it could be a lot worse. All right. So we're going to I'm going to speed through placing some of these and we will be back in just a minute. I am leaving this row here because this will be a transition zone. We're going to have some density and city services that are necessary that we're missing. OK, so I've added lots of parks. I've got some basketball uh, courts over here, some smaller parks in the middle of where we will have some of our, we'll have some homes around there. We've got a dog park because everyone loves a dog park. And then I noticed all of the pedestrian activity that we're seeing here. And this is really outstanding. And I'm wondering where these are all coming from. Oh my goodness. <laughs> these are folks coming from the apartments. Uh, let's fix the node for them because that's a terrible crosswalk. It's a longer walk, but that's a significantly shorter crossing distance, which makes it better in my mind. Uh, this is really illustrative of a problem that we have. We need some sort of connection here. I think we're gonna add a temporary pedestrian connection. And these are always dangerous to build because a temporary pedestrian connection becomes a permanent one. You'll never take this thing away once you've granted it, but we're gonna do it anyway. So I'm curious if people are gonna take this one instead. Yeah, look at all of that pedestrian activity. Did that kill all of our activity here? No way. But this is a desire path as well. Where are people walking? They're walking to the school. They're walking all the way across the pedestrian bridge. From over here, wow, they're walking all the way to the train station. That's a truck, actually. But they are walking all the way over here. They're walking to the Memorial Gardens. They're walking everywhere. So absolutely fantastic that we have a couple of connections there. All right. We need to get serious about this and get this area filled in. I'm going to get moving. Okay, so what I've done now, uh, I really wanna zero in on certain asset creators so that things match within a block. So it looks like a certain developer came in and developed either a street or a block. Now we're going to go for some larger homes and front what will be the university. So I really want to make sure that we've got some four by four buildings. So I'm going with false Lucidity's homes and they have a whole bunch of these stick homes that look very historic. So we're going to go with four by fours, which will narrow it down to some of these really large ones. So we have these East Lake stick and then it's pulling up Cape Cods. So I'm going to look for the term stick which will narrow it down to these four. And I think it's gonna be just fine. Now, interesting, we're seeing some of the same land value issues that we had before. I think we need to carve this out and make this a neighborhood and work on setting our maximum and minimum land values here. So right now, this is all part of capital. I'm gonna carve this area out and in the comments, if you could leave me a preferred name for this neighborhood. So this is a brand new neighborhood. We might want to inspire it by the university, which also needs a name. So if you have ideas for the name of the university, drop that down there as well. And the main reason I need this district is not because I want a name. I mean, I do want a name that is important, but it's, it's really because I want to be able to control what's happening here with our land values. 
So we'll come through here now, look at Fawn Square and say that our maximum level is three again, then force everything into a downgrade. And that gets these to level three, and there should be no problem reaching level three. Okay, I'm just going to say it. This is absolutely addicting. <laughs> I've been just quietly sitting here in my own thoughts, placing these homes and admiring how reasonable and realistic the blocks look. And that is all thanks to controlling everything that has happened. <laughs> because the game just doesn't handle some of these things all that well. Okay, <laughs> so I will not accuse this of being the easiest way or the quickest way of building a neighborhood. You can do it quickly. You've got to focus and you've got to really want it, <laughs> but you can certainly do it this way. So we're going to go ahead, make a couple of pedestrian connections, and then I think we're going to take inventory of what we've done because we have to. And I'm curious, this right here, this very well... This may be a zonable pedestrian. Yeah, it is. So we're going to make that a formal connection there. And that will allow some, some really nice connectivity through here. And we will also mirror our landscaping decisions down here. There we go. There we go. So we have added a few thousand in population. It's not nearly as much as, as I would like to see, uh, but we are going to add in a few more uh, folks in our city after we add some city services. So we have neglected our police. We're gonna add in our lovely Japanese police, fire and uh, healthcare services. So we're gonna add those in, have a little city services complex right here by the, the main arterial entering this area. And that's gonna make sure that we're spreading the love so that we have maximum coverage. And even though this tram network is, uh, because this tram network is functioning, as uh, kind of an arterial for the tram network, we're not gonna focus this development on that road if at all possible, because we wouldn't want uh, a fire truck loading onto the tram network. And then I'm gonna go with a cryo preservatory, and not because I think it's uh, the future and we're in the future here, it's just because I think that the buildings look a little bit nicer and it's a death care building, so we are gonna just take it for what it is. Along here, we're gonna accept some of our higher densities and line those up along here. Weird little oddity here. This is where I played with the roads a little bit. I wish that this were perfect. I wish there were a mod that could help me square this back up, but I don't believe that there is. So we are gonna need, just need to accept a bit of imperfection and a bit of manual uh, adjustment there most likely. And I'm gonna come along this road and we are gonna max out our densities here as well. I don't love what's happening here. This is a zonable key wall. I could adjust this, but I'll likely lose all my settings here, even though they're kind of messed up already. We are gonna just add a little fence here to block our zoning so I don't have to redo all of our node control, or uh, all of our intersection marking tool wizardry. And I'm not gonna lie, this is the first time in a while that our residential zoning demand is at almost nothing, and I am absolutely dumbfounded in a good way. <laughs> I'm really excited to see that because it's just been so long that we've had this issue. Well, very interesting. It just looks like there's no demand for residential right now, which is a good place to be in. And that makes me wonder if we click around and look at some of our buildings, we, we aren't really seeing any issues over here. I am seeing issues at the train station, not enough workers that I, that makes me very curious about our education pipeline. Are we seeing issues there? Elementary school, we're uh, we're not in a great place. Same with high school. We've known that been we've known that that's been a problem. University, plenty of capacity, so probably not a huge need for a university campus, even though we're going to build it anyway. And uh, public library coverage is poor because we've got like two. So <laughs> there we go. We're going to do one more thing over here, and that is add some trees before we take inventory of the work that we've done in the sky. <laughs> we're going to just. Looks like we have anarchy on. We're going to take that back so we can just densely landscape using our Ashland brush. 
which has a nice little mix of trees. We're gonna take our strength down because I don't wanna go crazy and put forests in backyards, which is what we've been doing. So let's really take this down. Just wanna be able to brush in a couple of trees here and there, go over it a couple of times if we want more. Okay, so not a lot of landscaping to add. These homes are really packed in there tight. Some, uh, some may be a bit too tight, uh, but I think for the most part, it's okay. This provides a nice variety of, of, of housing options, which I really appreciate. So that's a good thing in my, in my opinion. So I think that this is the perfect time to take inventory of what we've done and have a brief city tour. And it's nighttime and I remember one of the problems I have with these suburban roads. Oh, oh, we've lost power. <laughs> we've got a problem. So I think that we need to take a look at that real quick. Oh yeah, power, water, sewage. We're on the edge of everything. So we're gonna have to focus on that coming up very soon. But for the time being, we're just gonna take a look at this and boost our budget up just a little bit. And we've been making a lot of money uh, for the time being. So as as I Im increase the budget to get us some overhead on electricity, water, sewage, and garbage, I've also increased the budget on our uh, road maintenance and uh, some of our transit options and, and the airport so that we are really encouraging people to use those modes of transportation. Now, what I was going to say is that one of the things I dislike about the suburban roads is that they don't have lights. And that is a concern of mine. We're still in a fairly urban area, so this might be one mulligan that we have to call, and that is we've got to get some big urban roads in here so we have lights. I want to say that if we upgrade these, yeah, we'll get some street lights. So we are going to go ahead and do that very, very quickly. Okay, so we've got all those upgraded. Now let's see what this looks like at night. Oh yeah, and it's not a lot of light. These are low density residential neighborhoods. We get just a couple of street lights, which come on, we're in a city. It's a city. You gotta have lights at night. You gotta safety reasons. And uh, there are a few places uh, obviously that, that that don't do this. Generally, most cities are gonna have street lights. It's a, there, there are many, a very, there are a number of reasons you want them. And uh, the suburban design here is not gonna work just yet. We'll do, we'll get there. We'll get there, but we're not there just yet. So I do think that we are at the end of the episode. Remember, I want a name for this neighborhood and for the college campus, which will be coming soon. Look at how big this area is getting. I'm really, really happy with the way that this has turned out. And I hope that you've enjoyed it as well. If you did, please consider hitting the like button. If you aren't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I really cannot wait to see you in the next one. Thank you so much for joining me today. See you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.